Welcome to the Volt MX Foundry Object Services tutorial. In this video we're going to cover the basics of object services and how they help you develop apps faster maximize your reuse and lower the effort of updates and maintenance. Most mobile applications read and write data to some back-end system. In traditional app development this is accomplished by building granular APIs for the app to invoke. Think of Foundry Object Services as a shift to object-oriented programming for your mobile app backend. Creating an object model for your mobile app benefits your client developers by providing them an easy-to-understand object representation of the data they need, plus the methods to interact with that data. This is accomplished by defining an app data model for your mobile app that is optimized for how your mobile app wants to view the back-end data. The second step is to map this data model to one or more back-end systems using the integrations and transformation capabilities of Foundry. To demonstrate this we will use an order entry application. Here we are logged into the Foundry console, and we're going to configure the backend for the orders app. For the sake of time the identity service has already been configured for more information on the Foundry console, or the identity service please see the related overview tutorials for these components. Under the object tab is where we will configure our object services for this application. For this example we'll be using an SAP backend as our data source. Under the Data Model tab we were able to define our preferred app data model regardless of the format and structure that the backing will provide the data. This app data model can also be offline enabled so that automatically persists on the device for offline enabled apps. This is why you will see a lot of configurable parameters such as primary keys indexes and relationships that help control how the data is stored on the device for optimal performance. For this example we are first creating the order entity and all the associated fields for an order. Next we will define the order items entity and the associated fields. The intent is that an order object will have one or more order items associated to it, therefore, we'll also define a relationship between the parent order object and the child order item object based on the object ID field. The second step for configuring object services is to map the app data model to the backend system. In this case our backend system is SAP and we can browse the various business object exposed to us using the SAP data adapter with built-in metadata discovery. Once we select an entity in SAP we can map that to our app data model object. Notice that we're in a tab named Common Mappings that handles basic mapping use cases where the mapping is mostly one-to-one. -one. A user can also configure advanced mapping logic for each method on an object such as get put or post or even custom verbs that the user defines. The user can also configure how the request is sent to the back end. For example a user can specify an order data filter to only return orders where the status is not equal to draft. The user also has direct access to the advanced capabilities of the Foundry Mapping Engine in the Request and Response Mapping tabs where complex transformations can be configured. However in some cases all or part of the backend model is reusable and it's helpful to be able to generate the app data model from the backend. In this case Foundry Object Services allows you to easily discover the business object exposed by a particular backend and then generate the app data model and mappings. The user can then rename or adjust the model and mappings as needed. In this scenario we will use the Generate option under the Data Model tab. We can easily browse the business objects in our SAP system and select the parent object and child objects we want to use in our application. The console then displays all the model objects that will be generated and the user has an opportunity to rename them if they prefer a different name. The app data model is then generated with the same fields metadata and object relationships as the backend. The one-to-one -one mappings are also automatically generated and each method the backend object supports is automatically created and mapped. The user can then go into each method if needed and modify how the data is retrieved.
For example they can still set the order data filter to only retrieve orders with a status not equal to draft and do advanced mappings and transformations on both the incoming client requests and the backend server responses. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that objects could easily be enabled for offline access. To do that we just have to configure a sync scope that defines how the data is synchronized between the device and the backend. For example we specify the sync strategy which tells Foundry at runtime if it should maintain its own persistent cache of the data or if it should send every request directly to the backend. We can also configure how to manage data conflicts you can choose client wins or server wins or write your own custom conflict resolution policy. Once the sync scope is defined we associate that with our object service and it will now automatically be synchronized to the device storage when we invoke the object methods from the app. And lastly I said that objects can help maximize your reuse across applications. Once the set of objects are defined you can easily reuse them in other applications by simply clicking the use existing button and picking the groups of objects you need for your application. Now traditional app development using direct API calls is still a valid approach for certain use cases but when your app can benefit from a well-designed app data model and abstraction from the complexity of systems then using the object services capabilities will significantly accelerate your development cycles. Your client developers will also write less code and logic in their applications because object services will generate the client-side object classes to simplify their development. Please refer to Volt MX documentation for more information.